Welcome to the Mulatto History Channel. The Mulatto History Channel is dedicated to sharing and exploring Mulatto history around the world. So tune in and enjoy the history lessons that I share with you on this channel. The Mulatto History Channel is dedicated to sharing our history, our story, and our voice. But shout out to Across the Pond, to all the beautiful people out in the UK. So today is kind of covering an article for you guys, for all of us exploring history. So I'm reading from this article. The source here is the um, Face to Face Africa. And I actually found out about this story through like a mutual on Facebook. And this, uh, the, the gentleman shared this piece as kind of like, you know, <laughs> black excellence, so to speak. So that's why the title is referenced, uh, you know, blackwashing mulatto history, right? Typically when there's a mulatto achievement, mulatto black, white, biracial does something that's excellent or achieves something very high and esteemed in society. Uh, black people are quick, monoracial black people are quick to kind of claim that individual and take their achievement as a only quote black achievement but they don't highlight the other part, the white part, and also the kind of uh, mulatto part of it as well, I should include, because who knows, you know, um, this was over a hundred years ago, what kind of struggles he had, not only from the white society, but also the black society. Because, you know, the, our history is typically told as if, you know, black people are all accepting, they're all inclusive, you know, you're one of us, we claim you, the one drop rule, blah, blah, blah. But as we can see in today's society, in 2022, things are, you know, entirely different. Things have changed drastically, I should also add, even within the past decade, you know, things are completely different today. We're all kind of discovering that and understanding that, coming to that conclusion. That's why it's extremely important to kind of highlight the history and to kind of provide a modern analysis, so to speak on these kind of historical events. So I, I got this article and of course read the article. I'm gonna read it for you guys today. What's going on? Good to see you. Of course, we got a UK brother in the house. Definitely shout out to everybody. Appreciate you guys. So jumping right into it. Lewis Bruce uh, spelling air conceals first black biracial, I should put a quotation mark, first quote black biracial Olympians. <laughs> Uh, featuring uh, for over 100 years. Now, when I saw this photograph, this image, that's what first like kind of, you know, sparked my interest. It was like, ah, oh, okay, this is black. Okay, interesting. You know, I've been to an all black nation. And I can tell you, you know, majority of individuals, they don't look like this. This stood out to me. I was like, okay, this is black. Let me dive into this and check out what this is all about. So I apologize, a lot of ads on this uh, webpage. So his name was buried in the annuals of British Olympic history for more than 100 years because his name was wrongly spelt by athletic authorities and journalists. When he was first uh, competed as the quote black, I got to put the quotes there, right? A uh, heavyweight wrestler in 1908. So 100 years ago, we're talking about Lewis Bruce, who was born in Edinburgh in December 1875, made it to the second round for the 1908 Olympics in London. Olympic wrestling documents had captured uh, had his name as Lawrence and Luis. The ironclad rule in sports journalism during the 1900s further uh, deepened the mystery about his real identity as they identified him as L. Bruce. The sports rule was to use the first initial and surname for athletes. 
uh, but a trove of documents and digging by Canadian researchers, uh, Connor May and uh, Rob Gilmore in their attempt for synthesized official ath athlete records from London from 1908 brought the findings to light. This makes Lewis Bruce the sixth earliest popular quote black athlete to have competed in the Olympics in the 1900s. The first was Constantine uh, Henriquez, who played rugby for France in 1900, the U.S. hurdler George Pogue, and two South African marathon runners, Gwyn, I can't pronounce that, uh, Tuan, and uh, John Masani. <clears throat> now, interesting with these names, I mean, I could obviously go up and, you know, look at these individuals as well. I could have did that before this broadcast. I apologize. But I'm more focused on this gentleman because of... Um, like I said, how kind of mulatto achievements, mulatto history is, is always blanketed as kind of being, quote, black. So it's like the black society will claim us when we do something excellent, we do something good that will bring them fame and notoriety. But if we're just average individuals living our lives, um, then there's a lot of jealousy and competition. Then it's like, well, I don't know. You're not you're not like me, but they'll claim him. Right. He's one of theirs, according to, you know, the people who wrote this article at uh, what is it? Face to face Africa. I'm not exactly 100 percent sure who, where this article, the uh, headquarters for the publishing is, but I don't think it's really relevant at this moment. Let me go back. I apologize, guys. So, um, yeah. And. Uh, OK, Sprinter Harry Edward was initially thought to have been the first black athlete to compete in the Olympics after he won two bronze medals at the 1920 Antwerp Games. But 12 years before Harry, uh, Harry set this record, an unsung hero, Lewis Bruce, uh, had participated in the 1908 Olympics in London. He is also celebrated as one of the first, quote, black tram drivers in Britain by historians and transport observers. Director of Communications of British Olympic Association Scott Field indicated that the findings only goes to confirm the respect for diversity that existed in British Olympics. The first hurdle they faced is that many uh, competitors' full names were not included in the official records. In Bruce's case, there was a further complication as he was uh, erroneously identified in some history books as Lawrence Bruce. Now, just for, I guess, just an audio check. I don't know, is my audio good? Is the sound a little bit, um, I don't know, is the music a little too loud for you guys? All right. So continuing on, um, the Canadian researcher Connor said they were able to piece bits and pieces they gathered on Bruce through newspaper reports and census archives. He explained that through Bruce's name had been misspelt, census archives on his res, uh, residence matched with his present location. He observed the newspaper advertisement had described him also, quote, Darky Bruce in his bout with Ernest Nixon. Connor said historical records uh, from the Snake Pit Wrestling Club in Wigan, Wigan uh, solved the puzzle for the for the researcher research team as it provided insights on entry forms in list of the participants of the 1908 Olympic wrestling. He explained that the details included the full names and addresses of all the Olympians who represented the British team and clarified the true identity of Lewis. He indicated that the information the team carried along was uh, was that he was Lawrence Bruce and a member of the Hammersmith Amateur Wrestling Club who happened to have competed in the heavyweight division in the 1908 Olympics and defeated Alfred Bambrook in the first round. The Canadian researchers said they were able to acquire the full names of every single competitor with their original handwriting and the home address. Addresses. He said all doubts were cleared when sports historian Andy Mitchell provided the team with the birth certificate of Bruce as well as his uh, photograph from his days as the tram driver in 1908. Uh, Connor, uh, <laughs> 1906, excuse me. Connor further added that Bruce's sporting feature did not die after the 1908 Olympics, but he moved on to win the uh, London United Tramways heavyweight title in 1913 and also 
was the winner in a one mile walking handicap race at Griffith Park. Bruce passed away in 1958 at the age 82. But researchers say like how history treated him unfairly by bearing his glory. Another mystery to unravel is the true identity of his father. His birth certificate indicates that his mother, Jane Elizabeth Downey, was white. But details about his father remains obscure. And that's buried all the way. You know, I said this is uh, the art. The, the name of this website is um, Face to Face Africa. So like I said, when I saw the image of the man and I read through the article, and this is buried the last sentence of the entire article. <laughs> you know, how convenient, right? Just claiming our excellence and our victories is, quote, black, you know but then throwing us under the bus and gatekeeping us, you know, at every step of the way all over social media. But this is a kind of a newer phenomenon is what I'm seeing too. We have evidence of this. We see this all over social media. I'll be sharing a lot more. That's kind of the premise of my channel as well is not only the combat, the uh, conspiracy theories by the pro wax, but also the gatekeeping aspects and the gaslighting and the stigmatization and kind of the need for us as mulatto people to have our own spaces. Uh, our own identity to kind of, uh, you know, protect our own identity and how our identity is stolen from us. And we're lumped into blackness, obviously, like we mentioned with the, you know, 1924, uh, you know, the Racial Integrity Act and how the, the whole one drop policy establishing throwing us into blackness, essentially this whole program to kind of uh, absorb us, so to speak. So we don't create our own community, our own societies where we can flourish. But, you know, going on to back to this article at the, the last sentence of the whole article, his birth certificate indicates that his mother, Jane Elizabeth Downey, was white. But details about his father remain obscure. I mean, that is quite interesting. I know. Let me actually I apologize, guys. I just realized that this is like, <laughs> you know, the, the text is too small for you guys to see. I apologize. But I did tag the. um the article in the description so you guys can go ahead and read it it's not a lengthy like read but i mean <laughs> you know i just read it in like what less than five minutes um so and yeah his birth certificate indicates that his mother jane elizabeth donnie was white but details about his father remain obscure so they don't have all the records about his father but they say his, they did they just indicated they don't have the records of his father they're seeing a picture here but then they say that his mom is white I want to claim this man. This article is face to face Africa. This is a win. The first quote black British Olympian. This is a mulatto man. Well, OK, Let, let's call a spade a spade. And more of you guys need to do that. You know, I'm up here talking to you guys, but more of you guys need to start doing this and put this information out here because it's getting it's getting ridiculous and we can't allow people to do this. We have to make it clear and say, no, we're here. This is one of ours. We're claiming him and his achievements. You know, just like Frederick Douglass and Obama. And there's a contradiction here, right? Face to face Africa. This is all black history. First black British, you know, Olympian. But of course, it says right here he has a white mom. So this individual came out of the womb of a white woman. I'm sorry. This is not a black man. This is a mulatto man. OK, we're calling a spade a spade. So here's another picture of the gentleman because it said he not only was an Olympic wrestler, um, but he was also a tram driver. Here we go. A lot of ads on these articles uh so here he's a tram driver i'm pretty sure it's this gentleman here i'm 100 percent sure <laughs> but yeah this is like 1900s you know um here we have here a wrestling match researchers believe the athlete reached the second round in a 73 kilogram uh catch is catch pitcher in the final event 1908 you know it's kind of hard to tell which is which here but that's wrestling and this is another gentleman, I believe, Edward Pitcher in 1902. It's a sprinter. Um, but then I, I actually tagged this article as well. It's in the description box. This is from, was it the Daily Mail UK? So they shared this at the beginning of the year. But similar findings, I mean, similar information. Like it says, I found something here. His mother, who was thought to be white, was Jane Elizabeth Donnie, but his birth certificate does not name the father. So they don't have a lot of information on the father. But whatever case the case may be, they have information on his mother and that they indicate his mother's white. But that's the interesting thing, you guys. And you look at it. It's like, why are they identifying this man as being black? So does the one drop rules it extended into the UK? Is that is that the case here? I mean, this is a question I'm kind of asking for you guys, because this is, you know, 
we're not confused about who we are is what we come to terms with now why we're reading this we're sharing information we're coming together we're not the ones who's confused it's a lot of society you know they look at us as we are a kind of utilitarian population where they feel like they want to use us they want to use us to fight their battles against these other groups and where a lot of the kind of uh disdain comes from is when they realize when we stand in our own they can't use us right they want to claim our victories claim them as, as excellence for them or they want to put us against another group and vice versa both groups do that um and so we're not the ones who are confused they're confused you know they're trying to figure out you know are you mixed are you mulatto or are you black or whatever i mean i'm looking at you know kind of the the sem semantics of this guy came out of a white woman but they're claiming he's black okay yeah that's pretty convenient I'm hoping a lot of you will join me and reclaiming our history, reclaiming our identity and protecting and preserving our identity and not allowing others to use us. We've we let people have it too easy. To be honest with you, we've been too quiet, too silent, far too long. So now we're going to be more vocal about these things and not allow the foolishness to continue. And I'm happy to be kind of a, I guess you can say spokesperson, so to speak, to uh, share this. That's the issue is you have mulatto people who will push back against us trying to organize and preserve our identity and they're serving the black monolith very important 